Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to Build. I'm your host, Carrie Justick. And tonight, I'm sitting down with none other than Bella Thorne. The former Disney star has been in the spotlight since she was just a kid, but never has she opened up quite like she is in her latest piece of work titled The Life of a Wannabe Mogul, A Mental Disarray. Through a collection of poems penned by Bella herself, she's letting her audience in on her personal struggles, relationships, and wild child lifestyle. Please help me in welcoming Bella Thorne. Wow, hearing you say that kind of felt like a, a movie or a dream. Yeah. That was kind of weird. <laughs> well, wow. I was going to say, even when you say, like, when I said Disney star, because mm -hmm. that's really where people knew you from. And that was not even 10 years ago, but it mm -hmm. feels like a lifetime ago. Yeah. And especially after reading this, I mean, first of all, Bella was just freaking out about seeing this up here. This is it's pretty so cool. cool. Look how big it is. Oh my God. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> um, but after reading this, I feel like, I mean, you're only 21, mm. but I feel like you've lived 12 lifetimes. Thanks. Um, can you tell me a little bit about this book? Like, how did it even come to be? Well, I really needed some money. <laughs> yeah. Um, As you do. <laughs> and, uh, and then I, I wrote two books, handwritten, and they, uh, I lost them on a Delta flight. Yep. Gone. Gone. And I never photocopied them. And I wrote them over like two to three tours. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I know. When I read it that, sucks. I was like, that yeah. really sucks. Heartbreaking. No, it's yeah. heartbreaking. You're but literally like, this is... Ah, ah, oh my god two whole books two books handwritten who even hand writes anything anymore anyway oh my god i was delta i'm sorry fuck you delta well i was gonna i was gonna say i feel like after this comes out you might be hearing from delta like yeah, they'll no. probably be like oh delta we have is those. giving me a sponsorship <laughs> yeah. they're literally yeah. giving me an endorsement they're like we're so sorry about this is awful but um yeah for some reason i didn't photocopy them because i'm a fucking idiot for, i don't know why i just i you know i was like they're i don't i don't i don't know what i was thinking so this one it took me <clears throat> a minute to come to terms with the fact that those two books were going to be lost in the abyss, never to be appreciated. Mm -hmm. And then I had to get over that. And then I had to write another one because I was still trying to write a book. Yeah. So <laughs> I wrote this one in two weeks while I was on sets filming a show. And I wrote it all on a typewriter, mm -hmm. which is very interesting, very difficult little piece of art um, uh, in process. And while I was on set completely, like, I'm in the middle of scenes with my typewriter. Like, it. luckily I played a bass player, and so my character is just, like, super dope and punk rock and indie as fuck. So, like, nobody was looking at me weird that I was walking around with a big-ass typewriter while rehearsing my dialogue. But, you know, if I was playing any other character, it would literally be like, uh, what are you doing? This is so weird. Well, I feel like you talk a lot about the fact that you even like the handwriting that you were talking about with handwritten books. Like, why was the medium so important to you? Like, why did you decide that you wanted to do this on a typewriter? Well, the fact that I lost the handwritten books, I was just like... Not doing that I'm again. Not, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, and I wrote in the book, I have one about identity. And I basically try to explain that handwriting, in my idea, is your truest form of your identity. You can't fake it. You can't, you, 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 you can't detail it to look different. You can't make it what other people want it to be. It's yours. It's completely yours. It's authentically yours. It's literally your DNA, your handwriting. Like, it just, I explain it in the book like... Look at my handwriting, look at my sister's, and look at our rooms. And you just know my chicken scratch over here. That's my room. Like, that is, like, that is just my life. That's the way that I perceive things. That's the way that my mental brain works, like, really. And hers is, like, cute and bubbly and neat and organized and just perfect looking. And that's her little brain over there organized and neat and just like she's just you know so so I, I say that the handwriting is your truest form of your identity and therefore I, I, I give so much in this book so much personal fucking shit that's just so out there and dark and raw so handwriting 
It's almost like, thank goodness I didn't put it in there because it would almost be too much of my identity to give everyone to just put it out there like that. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about how much personal stuff you put in this book, which is very, very true, um, why now? Like, why did you even decide to write this? Like, I feel like something must have sparked that other than I just want to write a book because you could have written about anything. Why were you like, I want to just air all of this to the world, essentially? Mm. Got to think about it for a second. Yeah. Um, I think I'm just tired of not being me. Well, I'm tired of not people per perceiving me not as myself. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know what vibe I give off or what the fuck I'm, like, literally putting out there so hard that everyone that literally meets me and knows me is always just like, wow, I'm you're just such a different per I did, oh my god I'm so sorry apologizing to me like they thought the worst of me before they fucking met me and I'm just like who am I to you guys because I feel like I'm pretty authentic I go out of my way to never wear makeup unless I'm being paid for it or I'm doing press I go out of my way to not edit just a tinge of my photo I have to go out of my way to tell um magazines re refusing to let them print a cover of me if it's fucking edited like a mother I'm just like bro like this is just unattainable beauty stand like this you know there, there is so much about myself I go out of my way to try and be like this is me look at me I'm right here and yet I don't know how I keep getting lost like nobody understands me or sees me because everybody that fucking meets me is so shocked of who I am so this book was kind of just like I'm just tired of it man like I'm tired of people thinking something about me that's just not me and I don't know another way to show people who I am other than just literally being like here it is on a silver platter fucking judge me and take it for what it is I don't know if you don't like it fuck you I don't know like you know there's I feel like I have no other option than to just do that because other than that I, I, I feel like I'm lost over here. Like, you know, I, I don't know where I fit in or I, I think I do, but yet nobody else can see where I do. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. Well, definitely when you say it's like not the first time that you've tried to be authentic, I totally get that. Like, I feel like on your social media, you're super authentic. Everything you kind of put out into the world, you seem to have a lot of control over. And that's how you make sure people are understanding who you are. But do you remember a time when you were younger and maybe it was like the first time that you were like, fuck it. Like I'm going to put this out instead of letting a magazine put this out about me. Like, was there a time when you were like, I want to be authentic and that kind of started it all? I don't know that there was a specific big moment. There wasn't necessarily a specific circumstance, but Honestly, it was just a lot of years of my life lying and, and, and kind of lying so much to the point that y you believe it. You don't even know what is uh, what is wrong and what is true about yourself. You know, you're kind of confused, honestly. Um, and it, it, it kind of took me a while to just kind of get past that and, 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 and work my way to getting past that because that's what you have to do. It's work. You, mm -hmm. It's not easy. Um so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I feel like your audience totally resonates with it, and I feel like you've probably gained more fans and friends and all of that stuff from being your authentic self. Um, but in the book in particular, I wanted to touch a little bit on your family because you talk a lot about your family, um, and I'm just curious about their reaction and if they've read read this and what they thought because I know at the end you even write kind of you have one letter to your mom and then you have a second letter to your mom where you kind of apologize to her for everything that you've said but you needed to get it out like out there um what's their reaction been to all of this they haven't read it yet they haven't mm -mm. are you nervous yeah I'm, I'm definitely nervous I mean obviously with my mother I'm like you know it is what it is I've um, we've been, you know, we've really been working so much on our relationship and we've been getting so much closer and, and, you know, there, there really is a silver lining if you want the one to be there, you know? Um, but w I think mostly I'm, my 
she still hasn't read it, no, but I've read I've read her parts from it mm -hmm. so she can kind of understand where the tone is coming from. But my brother hasn't read any of it, and I'm definitely um, very interested to see where he's at with it because he's just like... Um, He's, like, not a very public person, so I think he's probably going to feel weird if he even sees this right now. <laughs> he's going to be like, oh. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it would. It's, it's interesting because, like, everybody else's story is their own story. My story is mine. And so the fact that I'm writing about them must feel super weird for them because... I'm writing my own story and there are characters in it that play a huge role. Mm -hmm. And so that must be really weird. Um, I don't... I, yeah, I yeah. feel like there's like a fine line between when somebody writes something like this that's so personal, like you're saying, you're obviously telling it from your perspective. Yeah. So you're not telling somebody else's story necessarily. Yeah, I'm not but telling it's, someone else's truth. Yeah. I'm only telling my own. And so therefore it can be completely misconstrued or... It can be different than how they saw it or, you know, it's just, it's, 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 it's weird. And the boundaries on this book are very thin because it's a life and life is fucking fickle. And there's a lot of shit that happens to you that most likely you don't want to talk about. But if you never talk about it, you never get over it. Okay. I really believe that to talk about some, you have, if, if you, Whatever your darkest shit is that you went through in your life, that you're like, that's the worst thing. And we all know what that thing is when we go to bed. That thing, if you don't spend so much time going over it again and again and again and beating it into your brain over and over, you're never going to get over it. Because you have to get so used to it that it feels like nothing anymore that its relevance is no longer big. It's just a sandwich or a, a, the color red or anything else in the room. It's just whatever. Because if you let this thing fester in your mind as a big deal and you don't go to that place, you don't ever go to that place, and then someone just touches on that place and that oh, it hurts so bad. It fucking hurts so bad because you don't ever deal with it because you never talk about it because you never think about it because it's so dark. You never want to go there. And if you never go there, you will never get over it. I seriously mean that. It's with all the shit that I've been through, you have to talk about it over and over and over and over again. That's why they say therapy isn't fun. It's not fucking fun to talk about it over and over again, to go through every detail and moment in your life, every terrible moment that you spend your whole life trying to forget. You have to live it over again. And that's not fucking fun. But do you want to be better? Do you want to feel better? Do you want to sleep lighter at night? Do you want to not let these moments affect you and your relationships and your friendships and every aspect of your life? And then yes, you're going to have to fucking go through the hard part. And I talk about that a lot in the book that y there is no, there's no cheat code to, to get to your end goal. It's just fucking through it. You can't go above or around. You literally can't do anything else. You have to just stick it through. Literally, just keep waking up every day because that is the bravest thing realistically you can do in the shittiest situation is to wake up again and again and again and be down to sit through it until it gets better. And when you talk about like going to a deep, dark place, um, what do you think was the hardest or the darkest thing that you included in this book? And what was the process of writing that? I mean, like, the molestation is pretty dark. Um, talking about my dad dying and all the thoughts that I feel around somebody that's dead, but you still feel like, like, in my opinion, just because you die doesn't mean you're forgiven. That doesn't take away all the bad shit you did. That doesn't make all the bad shit you did any better. That just means that you're no longer here. You can't stand up for yourself, so therefore we can't judge you as harshly. But that doesn't mean that I'm over it or that they're over it. You know, Not that my father ever did anything bad, but in, in the sense of uh, I think we all kind of hate our parents, whether your parents were the worst piece of shit on scum of earth or your parents were the best parents they could be ever. 
you still blame yourself. I mean, blame them for your own problems, you know, because a lot of your own mentality and insecurity stem from your parents. They raised you, you know, nature versus nurture. But at some point, you're just like, uh, I don't know how to feel. And if I feel angry, is that okay? And and I put that in the book. I put I put I put anger towards my dead father and I put anger and sadness and confusion towards a lot of things. And you know, I hope most of you in this room don't judge me for it. And if you do, that sucks. Are you scared for people to read it? Like obviously we talked about your family, but anybody can read this. Um so is there something is there any part that you're kind of anxious to see the fans reactions to it i mean knowing my fans they know me so well and they love me and they understand me and they accept me they'll read this book and they'll love it and i will feel great but a lot of people that don't get it i i don't know how they're gonna feel this book is already so out there i don't really need people twisting my words into worse scenarios than they already are they're pretty bad already in the book so it's kind of for me like hmm what are you guys gonna think or you know what are you gonna think and then choose to say something completely different you know that's that's uh, I'd like to think that it really will touch a lot of people in a cheesy way out there. Um, but there's with the best things, there's always the worst things. And, and I'm just kind of expecting that for some reason more than the best things. But that's also because I'm a glass half empty type of person. I can't help it. Um, and of course, you kind of said that writing this is obviously therapeutic. Um, do you think that writing this made you a better person at all like what is there any you know Bella before this book and Bella after this book <sighs> yes and no I mean I took a lot of parts from when I turned 18 to 19 things that I had written in my phone text messages a lot of different things that I turned into longer poems and complete you know detailed worded free-handed writing columns type vibes but yeah. <laughs> it's a little all over the place in that sense. Like I dated a lot of them so that you can tell where I came from, what I thought then to what I think now, these things are two different things and that's good. You grow as a person. That's a part of life. You don't have to feel weird because you disagree with what you once thought was truth. That's called changing your opinion and, and it happens. So I kept very much every single bit of me in there in that way to, to really um, show where I started and where I am. I definitely do feel different. I, I feel lighter. My mind feels lighter. I feel happier. Um, a lot of this shit I um, is my deepest, it's my like most saddest self, I feel like. And that's why it should be written and expressed because if you don't get those out and you let those feelings fester, they're just going to get more dark and depressing. And sooner or later, if you don't write them, that's why writing is so cathartic and like people just feel so entranced when they write is because usually people mostly write about the darker shit that they don't really want to say. You don't literally want to speak it, but you're okay writing it. And there's some type of escape that comes from writing. And, and if you're in a dark place, definitely try writing as one of your first habits to develop because I really do think it's really helpful. It really is. And obviously talking about so much darkness. Um, I'm just wondering after reading this, what makes you happiest and feel the most normal? My sister told me that I should write a list um, so that I can do that more often. Um, so we started writing a list. Spliffs, bike rides. Dirty Martinis, Sunshine, Painting, DIY, Crafting, those all go in the same scenario. Um, like jumping up and down, like dancing, like physical activity that involves music. 
Um, Vienna sausages. <laughs> this is such a good list. <laughs> you know, it just, 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 just writing down things that you know make you happy, and and trying to find small ways to just layer them in your everyday routine, in your everyday life. Um, ever since I moved to this new house, I've been going on bike rides like um, maybe like two times a week, and. I feel pretty good about it. I must say, I do. I feel pretty good about it. And I eat a lot of Top Ramen these days. And I feel really good about that, too. Another thing, I really, it just makes me happy. Honestly, same. Yeah. Ra- ramen's a go-to. So it, it really, I put Parmesan cheese on top. I've never done you that. You should try it. It's okay. really good with the oriental flavor. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's my next move. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good, yeah. So so trying to find things that, that, that make me happy and just lightly layering them into my everyday routine just to make my everyday happier or brighter in some sense i don't know i'm always trying to study it and kind of figure it out definitely um we're gonna hand it over to audience q a we have two questions from the audience mm. yes hi bella hey is there anything in your career you dev- you never done that you like to do um I mean, there's so much shit I haven't done that I'd love to do. and I feel like it's like the career. opposite. Like, she's done everything. <laughs> I'm like, what can't you do? Um, I'd love to do a traveling documentary show. Um, I never went to school, and I really want to learn. I just took this movie. It's an adventure movie. It's really not like the any movies that I do, like, at all. Like, I only do pretty dark. Like, this is, like, a Jumanji-type vibe, which is really not me. But it's a really good way for me to get a lesson in history because in the movie we travel through all different times. Um, and so I'm really excited because I'll actually get to visit these places and actually get a history lesson because I'm um, thinking of getting a tutor because I never went to school. So I'd never like to learn. Late. Yeah, it's never Education too late over here. Ends. Yeah, it sounds so stupid because I'm like, I'm 21 and I'm getting in a tutor and I feel so fucking dumb. But <sighs> I just like to know more about the world. Um, I appreciate it more now anyways. Believe me. I feel like definitely. You don't care about that stuff when you're like 10, 12, whatever. Mm -hmm. Now you'll appreciate it. No, I'm like, that's, that's awesome. (laughs) So I'd like to do like a traveling show. That would, that would be really cool. Something that I haven't done that I would be able to do. Be interesting. And then one more question. Hi, um, this question relates to some of the things that you've been saying. How is it transitioning from being a Disney store where everything was very tightly controlled? I was imagining Robert, Robert Iger just listening to your interview right now where he'd probably throw himself off the top of the castle, listening to some of the things that you said, which is incorrect as far as I'm concerned, to where you are now where you can freely express yourself and basically do your own thing. And how is it also, do you think, would that affect you being a role model for kids that grew up seeing you on Shake It Up? Um... I wonder how my appearance affects me being a role model with kids that watch me on Shake It Up. Luckily, with kids that watch me on Shake It Up, they were my age. When I was 12, they were 12. So we're all 20s now. And so I feel pretty good about the fact that we all made it to our 20s. (laughs) Honestly, I know that that sounds ridiculous, but that's a serious thing in this day and age. We're dying younger and younger. It just seems to be we just keep fucking falling off the face of the earth. So the fact that we're all here and we're in our 20s, I feel pretty fucking good about that, considering we could have ended up anywhere. So I don't know as far as that goes, but I do know that obviously the transition, it's really, uh, it's definitely tough, you know, but it, it is what it is. Like, it's like anything in my life. I mean, if you read the book, you'll be like, <laughs> transitioning from Disney to this was fucking easy. I don't know. Getting molested for fucking from your six to your 14 seems like way harder circumstances or being physically abused all the time seems like a much more difficult situation than fucking have paparazzi following you since you were 12. I don't know. I was still being molested when paparazzi were still fucking following me. So it's pretty hard in my mind to think about these big flashlight photographs and everyone thinking they know me and talking about me, but having no idea the type of mistreatment that I was still dealing with at that time, that everyone around me saw and did nothing. So I don't know. 
like, you tell me what's so hard. Because that, to me, way harder than any other of this other shit that I do on a daily basis. Somebody just said goosebumps. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here and speaking your truth and sharing this book with us. It's really, I mean, it's going to be a gift to everybody who follows you and loves you because you're really letting people in. It's really incredible. Um, I encourage everybody to pick it up when it's out. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, if you want to be a depressed little bunny, <laughs> go pick it up. <laughs>